Hello friends, it's Chris here. I just wanted to do a follow-up video to the last video on palette swapping and how you can use Asprite to hopefully improve your workflow on this stuff and uh, make it easier to deal with and draw a little easier. So what you want to do in Asprite is start with an index color palette. And the way an index color palette works is each color has an index. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so that's convenient because anything you draw here in, in this red, if you change the red to say purple, then it'll change every pixel that was red into that purple. So it gives you more control over you know, exactly what colors are being used. And if you want to change colors, you can do it real easy without having to do a shift R like uh, replace. So, so the goal is to get this into Game Maker, and if you remember, our sprite in Game Maker was this blue thing, so it wasn't red like the other one. But when you play it, um, it is red. So, so then what we have to what you have to do is, if you remember, the R values are what's important here. So these this R value here, black is zero. This dark color is one, and this light color is two. And that translates to this background that we use as a kind of lookup palette. And on that one, you can see for the first row that the one R as a one corresponds to this red and R as a two corresponds to this yellow. So we have to get this into something so that these reds have an R value of one and these yellows have an R value of two and black stays a zero. And, and you can do this really easy in a sprite with the index palette. Cause I, again, I leave the, I, I, the way I have it set up at the moment is the first uh, index value I use is the transparent background color. And then I start at black at zero and then one, you know, all the way up to however many you need. But in this case I have three, but we're only using two colors. So if you load up a, this other palette that you can make, and you make it for however many colors you can have up to 256 colors and you can see that black still zero 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 but this first color the r value is one the second color the r value is two the third color the r value is three so you know you do your work and then when you're ready to save or export it you load up this new palette and then you go ahead and save it and then when you pull it up here see it looks black but when you play it, it's it's like it should be because it translates based on this background palette. So, and then when you're done, you can just load up your um, original palette and and go back to to work. And apparently, they're putting all this in the command line interface so that you'll be able to make a batch file, a BAT file, and run commands and actually be able to choose which palette you use. So you'll be able to work in your palette and then choose which palette to use to export. And here's an example of a BAT file. You know, you, you set your Asprite variable and then uh, I set the palette here, but I haven't been able to get it to work. So, and then this is, you know, you can use your command line stuff to like export a bunch of tags if you have those tags in your uh, in your actual sprite sheet or in your a sprite file I don't have them in this one but this is what a batch file looks like but yeah and so that's how you can kind of work with all this stuff in a sprite then like I said you're ready to go you just load up your new palette export everything put palette back and then when you pull it in to game maker it'll look dark but if, 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 you, if it uses the shader it'll uh it'll get translated to the colors you need so hopefully that can help improve your workflow and and not have to make you you know have a way to have, try to find a way to manually have to recolor or use strange colors or anything like that so and one thing that you can also do is if you if you want to you know use red twice but you know only have it be changed once then you can make another color on here um, let's say close to red like say 250 or something and then add it to the palette we'll just put it here where this white one was 
and then and then when you go to your so it's slightly different when you're drawing here uh, but if you want it to be this red when you're actually using it then you would just make it the same red in the palette you see what I'm saying so the R value will take you here but then you can just use that same old red so that way you can change you know one of the reds and not the other one like if her hair's like if you have someone whose hair is red and say like something's red on their weapon you can make the weapon one like a little bit different on the index and that way you can keep that weapon the same and then you know change your hair color with this you know what I'm saying so that way uh, you can you know the, the red values are kind of the same but you can still change one of them and keep the other one red that's kind of instead of having to change every red that's kind of what I'm getting at there. Okay, well, hopefully that improves your workflow, and uh, good luck.